So today we're going to take a look at the 10 GBE adapter from a cases in both Windows as well as Mac OS. I will also tell you why even if you only have a 2.5 or 5 GBE network, this may still be the best network adapter for your Mac operating system. YouTube, welcome to Geek. Shh. So full disclosure, this unit was sent to me by cases for review. However, they will not be seeing my video before it goes live on my channel and I also will not be catering my opinions to suit their needs. Now in the box, we get the unit itself, a manual and a 19 inch 40 gigabits per second cable. Now separate and apart from that, you're gonna need at least a cat 6A or above ethernet cable. Personally, I'm using the cat seven. Now the reason cat six or under ethernet cables are not recommended is because they cannot fully saturate a 10 gigabit per second connection. Now back to the unit itself, it's an aluminum alloy enclosure with a rigid design to help accelerate natural heat dissipation due to it being fanless. So yes, it might get a little hot, but you're not gonna have to worry about any noise coming from this particular adapter. So it comes in at a little under three and a half inches horizontally, two and a half inches vertically, and also under an inch in width and weighs in at about 127 grams, which equates to about 0.27 pounds. So hopping over to Windows, as soon as you plug this into your Thunderbolt or USB 4 port, it should automatically install the Marvel Action drivers and all you should have to do is restart your computer to see Marvel Action under your network adapters. Now, if you're plugging it into one of those PCI adding cards, such as the Titan Ridge or the Maple Ridge, then you might have to manually download and install the drivers yourself and then reboot. Now, don't worry because the cases has the Marvel Action drivers on their website. Link will be in the description. Now, I did not buy this adapter for internet speeds due to me being limited to one gigabit up and down for my internet service provider and my unwillingness to pay more. But here's a speed test nonetheless. I'm getting what I'm supposed to be getting and I'm pretty sure you will as well. Now, the reason I got this adapter was to increase my network speed. So with the other end of the ethernet cable plugged into the 10 GBE port of my Ugreen NAS and running an iPerf3 test, you can see I'm getting the speeds that I'm supposed to, which is close to 10 gigabits per second. Now hop in the fence over to Mac OS under system information, you will quickly see that there's no need to install any drivers because it's already baked in to the operating system. Showing up as model NT0201 with a 40 gigabyte per second, speed connection. Now with the other end of the ethernet cable connected to the 10 GBE port of my Ugreen NAS and running the iPerf3 test, you can see that I'm getting the speeds that I should be, which is close to 10 gigabits per second. Now also when I'm running a Blackmagic disk speed test on one of my network drives, you can see that I'm getting up to a thousand megabytes per second over my network, which is the beauty and the ultimate goal of using this network adapter. Now, the reason that you may still want to purchase this adapter, even if you only have a 2.5 or 5 GBE network, is that the 2.5 and 5 GBE adapters use the Realtek controller, which have an outdated driver in macOS from 2020. Due to the driver being so old, you cannot increase the MTU size to anything above 1500. But with this adapter, you have the ability to reduce the speed from 10 GBE down to 5 GBE or 2.5 GBE while being able to increase your MTU size from 1500 to jumbo, which is 9,000. It's just something to think about guys. Now at the end of the day, this is a 10 GB adapter. So you already know it's going to get hot like every other 10 GB adapter on the market. Now I've seen it reach temperatures all the way up to 47 degrees, depending on your ambient temperature. But here's a quick way that you can drop the temps by a few degrees. Now using a thermal pad as well as a heat sink and mounting it on top of your adapter, you will indeed see a temperature decrease by a few degrees. Now it's not no crazy 10 degree difference, but at the end of the day, it is something rather than nothing. All right, so my only gripe with this 10 GB adapter is not really unique to the cases because all of them have the same issue. If you're using it with an M4 Mac mini, when you restart your M4 Mac mini, you're going to have to unplug the USB and plug it back in for it to be recognized in Mac OS. Now, this is a problem that you might not have if you never turn off your M4 Mac mini, but it's just an issue that I have to bring to people's attention. Anyway, that's it for this one, guys. Now, my next video will be a review of the Ugreen NAS 
DXP 4800 Plus coming to you next week. And the week after that, I will have a Plex 4K transcode test on the same DXP 4800 Plus. Anyway, my name is DeMarco Payne for Geeksh. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And last but not least, may the good news be yours.